Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today is going to be something a bit special. Today, we're going to take this bad boy apart. This is the Synology B Station, otherwise known by its model ID as the BST 150-4T, the 4TB one bay model. And in this video, we've already reviewed the hardware, the software, we've compared it against other devices. I'm not sure if those videos are live yet. If they are, hope you enjoyed them. But in this one, me and my trusty screwdriver are going to get down and dirty. We want to look inside this device. One, we want to know what drives inside. Two, we want to know what the cooling system's like. Three, we want to know where the OS lives. Is there an SSD inside? And four, how exactly is the drive held in place? And that's what we're going to do. Rip it apart and take a good look inside. But and you can skip ahead. This chapter's at the bottom. But please, please, please listen to these disclaimers. These are incredibly important because realistically, there are two kinds of people looking at this video. The first kind are people that already own this device and they want to have a little look inside. Maybe they're on the verge of buying it, but basically they are a normal day-to-day -day view, a viewer that is looking at this video to know what exactly is going on under the hood. The other kind of person watching this video is going to be a reviewer. It's going to be a techie. It's someone doing troubleshooting, maintenance, they're evaluating this product or something, and you are watching this video because you want to know what's inside without cracking open your device. And I get it, I get it. When I got this, there were no guides online. It took me a while to work out just how exactly one gets this Rubik's Cube of a case open. Trust me, it's a lot more tricky than it looks. But bear in mind, we are doing something that Synology do not want or advise or recommend you do. And by taking this apart, I am 99.99, let's go nuts, 100% certain you are knackering your warranty, knackering your support, and pretty much nullifying any kind of support Synology can give you on this device. They provide this as a contained solution with no hot swapping, no access. So if you are going to follow the steps in this video, keep in mind that not only are you completely severing, I would predict, any kind of support or warranty or any kind of maintenance that Synology can provide you on this, but you also run the risk of damaging the hard drive that's inside, scratching or damaging the motherboard inside, and ultimately making your B station utterly inoperable. Make sure you know what you are doing right now. And the second thing is, and you should already have done this, but never aligned, back the hell up when it comes to this data. Make sure you've got at least a USB backup, but more likely two different kinds of backup that are up to date. Take advantage of Synology C2 backup. Take advantage of file folder object or whole system backup on USB. Hell, use B files and backup to the cloud via Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. Use those facilities. Basically, have a backup in place before you follow any steps in this video. But that's enough doomsday book stuff. Let's crack on with our screwdrivers and take a little look inside, shall we? Okay, so here we are on my area of work that I'm going to be utilizing to show you the inside of this device. Straight away, you may have noticed an incredible increase in the brightness here. That's so when I bring components closer to the camera, you can make them out a great deal better. Also, the microphone is ever so slightly off of shot. And if I do knock things from time to time, I apologize if that gets super annoying. Also, I've just taken my cat to the vet recently. My hands took a bit of a kicking. I apologize for that. But here's what we need to do. So the first thing we're going to need is our crosshead screwdriver. And indeed, I would also recommend perhaps getting a flathead screwdriver, or at the very least, a small, firm, plastic kind of leverage item here. But I would recommend a thin head screwdriver for a later stage of this. What we need to do is go to the side of the device that has got that LED light there. Okay, the reason we're going for that one is we need to remove this rubber panel here. Go ahead and remove that rubber panel. We will have a lot more uh, fight than it looks like I've given it here. It's adhesive attached there at the bottom. But once you do that, it exposes the only two screws on the base of this device. These are the only ways you can use to get access to the inside of this device. Go ahead and remove these two Phillips head screws. Again, make sure you don't lose track of which one's which because there's actually three kinds of screw inside this device. And those three kinds of screw, if you mix them up, you're gonna tear this device apart. Again, I apologize for the heavy brightness and oversaturation there of light, but it's just the only way to ensure that I can show you a lot of these components in the most effective way possible. Now, normally you would be able to slide this panel out. You can actually see a little bit of give there at the top. And this is where 
our flathead screwdriver comes in because you just need to slowly put that in there and the tiniest amount of leverage inside there will remove that panel again bear in mind that you want to be very gentle here with this because what you're actually removing is the entire top panel which has that mesh ventilated panel there at the top and pop the device down there this is what the top panel there is made up of there it's got that meshed vent as you can see there at the top of the screen and there is that front panel where we've got that led marker and that led marker if we move this off camera or just slightly off, off camera there we can see there is the plastic run through for that led there at the bottom there's the drive and there is our top panel there the next screws we need to think about removing are these two here there's actually more screws internally but these are the first two we're going to need to go for. There's actually there's several screws holding the main edifice inside this device all in place. So we need to remove this one here. Do not remove these larger ones first. These are holding that hard drive in place. And removing those two soon would result in the system then having drives flying around inside. Which ultimately would result in a broken hard drive. So we're just going to go ahead and remove those two screws. Let's go for that. And the next thing, which is going to be very difficult to show you here on camera, is on the inside here, we have two screws on one side and one screw on the other. Those two screws there on that side, which you can only just about make out, there's one of them there, those two screws hold most of this in place. And on the other side, because and you can just make out there at the back, the heat sink panel, the other side of this system only has a single screw there. So you need to get into that cavity here and get to the two screws at the bottom. Now I would recommend using a much longer screwdriver. And again, we're gonna be utilizing our plus head screwdriver once again. But if you've got a longer version of this screwdriver, that would be fantastic. Otherwise you can just about get inside and access that screw cavity there. But if you do have a long one, go for it. But just bear in mind that because of this arm being in the way, you are going to be coming at this screw at quite a difficult angle there. And if I remove that out, you can see there is our next internal screw. We'll pop that there. The same goes, going in at an angle. We can come in there. Again, Synology have very, very clearly decided that having this system uh, in a closed architecture closed chassis is going to be beneficial not only towards simplicity and making sure it's all in one place but also securing the drive uh, when it's um, held out so you can see the first two screws on this side oh sorry that side are now removed so let's go ahead with that other side now to the final screw holding this in place Look how bright that light is showing you the contents of this i've never looked whiter in my life and yes i mean that in every sense of the word and there is our final screw removed there from the other side. So at this point, it's actually only held in place by a series of hooks. And the internal system will lift out quite easily. But be very delicate as you move along as to not make sure you do not scratch the internal motherboard on the inside of that casing there. So there is the internal casing you can see there at the back let's bring that up to the top you can see the brackets there at the back which held those other screws and of course the two screws and it is a plastic external chassis there not much else to write home about and now not only have we got our Synology HAT let's lower that brightness ever so slightly an HAT 3300 hard drive but also on the rear we've got that motherboard there that motherboard which has got that Realtek RTD uh, 1619B and the memory there soldered to the board and if we bring things just a wee bit closer there you're able to make out if we zoom in just ever so slightly that um, chip there in white it's very hard to get the zoom to show that I may have to put a splash image on screen for that one that chip there is the one that has our firmware on board there that it's got the bst 150-4t again that will be linked in the description on an article with some images there but this controller board here one of the first things that i'm really impressed by is no active cooling as this is 
a very power efficient system and already we've seen systems like the R uh, DS124 have this same hardware architecture I'm surprised and mildly impressed they've gone ahead and not utilized um, an active cooling it is purely reliant on passive cooling across the system there on the back we can see all of our individual connections there so we can see our RJ45 we can see our USB type C we can see our type A we can see uh, um, indicators there for the rear for resetting and finding the system and finally we've got that SATA connector with that drive they've not gone with a direct attachment on a uh, modified drive as some WD uh, drives have and those in the shucking community will know what I'm on about when there's adapters soldered to the hard drive they've not gone for that this is a standard HAT 3300 this is a Seagate hard drive uh, with Synology firmware and Synology branding if, if you find an HAT uh, 3310 drive the 3310 is the Toshiba N300 drive so remember 3300 equals um, the Seagate drive the 3310 is the Toshiba but the next thing we need to do is take a little closer look at this motherboard so for that we need to remove these two screws now be very careful here because this is when we could potentially damage the board and harm our system so a third kind of screw here and this is the countersunk one because part of it is utilized in the background we'll pop that there remove our other screw again i know it's super bright but we have to sort of use this as we can and then we slide this sideways the reason we slide it sideways is because of that drive adapter so now We've got a close-up of that board there internally. It's very similar. It's a tiny little micro board as well. It's clearly been this PCB designed for this edifice. And inside there, we've got our CPU and inside the modules of memory. All pre-soldered. And again, I'm not going to remove that. That is going to be just too detrimental to this system. And we have other tests to perform. And if we look at the other side of this, we can make out our SATA connector there at the base and there will be images linked in the article below there but that just leads us to the drive itself and the drive itself is held in place via two brackets on either side which are very easy to remove and now we've reached the end we can go ahead and remove these countersink uh, screws here that hold the drive in place can screw those out go with each one of them and there you go that will be the removal of our drive there's our first bracket there and again it's using those rubber counterpoints there bear in mind once you go for non-hot swappable NASs like the ds223j and the ds124 they have a similar system to this involving brackets holding drives in place this isn't that much different to what we've seen before it's just a removable caddy now i could perhaps run you know an experiment seeing what happens if we remove this drive if there's hot swapping enabled but of course anyone in the know will know that if this system is running on just a single drive and we still need to ascertain how much of the os runs on this drive given the delays sometimes to the responsiveness of the software definitely a certain amount of it must but the result is that we simply cannot remove this drive when the system's in operation if we had more than one drive we'd at least have redundancy to fall back on but removing a single drive in a single drive closed system is going to be just game over entirely and therefore not recommended but there you go those are all of the components that make up the Synology B station. Now, I know there are going to be some of you watching this video that immediately want to know what happens if you take this hard drive and then replace it with another drive. What happens if you replace it with a larger Synology drive? What if you go third party? Now, we're still debating, myself and Eddie, whether we're going to go ahead and do that for several reasons. Number one, if you go to the Synology download uh, section, you can find the firmware you can download for this. And as checked when we dug into it with certain code tools and with help uh, or with uh, Luca over at Black Void, we were able to see that the firmware that you download for this device when the system is running not only arrives with all the applications and services pre-installed, but also names the drive that's inside. It actually details an HAT330 um, hard drive much like this drive here now why is that important that means that it's not like a normal Synology such as the DS223 that has a little EMMC flash module inside and that EMMC flash module has a bootloader 
for Synology's firmware. That bootloader then installs the software. This is different. The software inside here is the whole OS. It's kind of like cloning a version of Windows almost on a single SSD. That means that if that firmware directs to a particular drive in the same way that a Windows installation directs to a specific partition and a specific drive without either intelligent internal automatic modification or manual modification, there's every possibility that using a different drive will not work inside this. Synology have clearly designed this system to be a closed, simplified, easy to use system. And that would not integrate into using third party drives. That is something we encountered before when using third party drives in some of the first few generations of WD's cloud system. So it would not surprise me if Synology do likewise. We may do experimentation, we may even make a video on that, but that is the main motivation behind us not including the third party drive installation in this system in this video. And that's something we might work on in the background. And if anything good comes of that, we might make a video about it. And if it is available, no doubt it's linked on the side of the screen somewhere on YouTube. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you're gonna use this video for your own resources, for your own content, please supply us a backlink. Videos like this that you're seeing here, generally for the channel, are kind of uh, a time suck. We spend a lot of time on these videos like these ones in particular and very little generally comes to them and we see photos and rips of videos like this all over online with no sources or backlinks. So do me a favor if you're going to use this video in your content, in your review, in your guides, your website, please backlink it and reference the materials. It helps us keep doing what we do and it's a little one hand washes the other. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description to all of our reviews, guides, and comparisons, uh, both on NAS Compares and on YouTube for the B Station. I recommend you check those out. But apart from that, I will see you next time.